Can we lift our hands to the Lord? Father, thank you for your touch. Thank you for your wisdom and your grace. Thank you for the new thing that you're about to do. Thank you for the new order. And I don't mean that in the world sense. I mean the, the new order in kingdom advancement. Thank you, Lord, for people that are fed up with uh, things the way they've been. And they want to move up higher now to the real kingdom reality of breakthrough and blessing and prosperity and usefulness and fruitfulness. The day of the church. Thank you, Lord. The Lord says the day of the church as it was is coming to an end. Amen. And I'm going to cause a new beginning now. Amen. A new outpouring of something new and fresh that you've not seen before, says the Lord. Amen. And my favor is going to come and shine upon my people. Amen. And God says, when my hand is upon you, every step you take is a new walk and a breakthrough that God will come behind and do new things. Yeah. And, and the Lord says, get ready now for the outpouring of my favor is going to come upon who I have chosen, mm -hmm. who I've ordained, mm -hmm. who I ch I've chosen to like, mm -hmm. not just to love, but to like, yeah. and who is going to begin to really fulfill my will. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said it's going to even become frightening at times when you see the miraculous supernatural happening around you, when you didn't even plan for it, it can be unexpected. And the Lord says, get ready now that you're going to see what it is I'm about to do in this new season and hour. And the Lord says, now the things of old are passing away and the new things are coming forth. As I said through my great prophet Isaiah in 43, 18, Consider not the things of old, remember not the former things, says the Lord, because now I'm going to do a new thing, and shall it not spring forth? Amen. And the Lord says, my favor and my fire is going to supersede and accelerate in excellence beyond what you've ever imagined. God said it's going to happen that fast, that quickly, that powerfully. It's going to even at times be frightening. The Lord says, get ready for the uncharted waters, the things that you didn't expect, the things that you may not even fully understand. Because God says, I've ordained you for a special thing, and that thing now has appeared before your eyes, and that season and day has come. It could have been known about before, it could have been sensed before, it could have been uh, thought of before, there could have been a a thought and an illumination, even as a vapor before, of what it is that I was going to do all along. And I'm seeing people now also that I've met a long time ago myself, and I knew something about them. But it couldn't, it couldn't be done at that time, even though I knew it. But the Lord says, watch now how quickly I move, how quickly I work how quickly things begin to come into focus and into fruition. And I will speak to you myself, says the Lord. I will ordain it myself, my own way. I'll brand it. I'll stamp it. I'll sign, seal, and deliver the package. You're going to see my favor upon this thing. And you're going to know that this is what I, the Lord, myself am doing. And it's a privilege for you to be a part. And the Lord says, think it not strange when some are called and they don't appear. Think, of, think it not strange the fact that many are called but few choose. God says, I'll sift quickly and hotly and, and, and with fire amongst the people and bring together whom I've ordained. And those that are not going to be reliable, God knows that in advance. He knows it in advance. So the Lord says, let no one turn your face from, from what? The Lord says, think it not strange how many are called, but few choose. Few are chosen. Well, the Lord says that is a, a funny way of the language telling you the word chosen, because I said that you should choose me. I've chosen you, but you should choose me. So it's not me calling and then 
doing everything. The Lord says, people have a part to play, to come zealously before me. You notice even in business, people that succeed in business, they're very diligent. They work like animals. Some people have had the testimony that are multimillionaires or billionaires today. They slept in their offices for years. They slept in cars. They, 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 they worked around the clock. People thought they were crazy. In Kenya, I met a man the other day, funny enough, in the midst of a funny place that I didn't really like too well in the natural. And I won't go there again, I don't think. But uh, the Lord did something amazing. I met this man, and he was telling a story. And he had a dream when he was a young man. He's very famous. I, if I said his name, you'd, you'd all know him. He's a very rich man, very, very famous man in this country. I mean, top, 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 A-list famous. Just met him by chance, and he just gravitated to me. Not to other people. He was talking to other people, and it just seemed to be whatever. But then he saw me. He says, I want to see you. I want to, I want to know you. I want to know something about you. And he just, we connected. And he had a dream to build something that people said he was crazy and he couldn't do it. Well, he stayed with it and did it. The rest is history. If I told you the name of the organization that he founded, he'd be like, I know that. And it started with a dream. But he had the passion to pursue it. And, I, and this is the word of the Lord because God is telling us again that without pursuit and passion and diligence and reliance and reliability and integrity and seriousness and aggressive action, uh, you, you're not showing that you're serious. Lift your hands. I'm not trying to teach and I'm not trying to teach you and poke you with the hot poker and the sword yet. So don't go, don't don't slow down on me now. You stay in the spirit. I don't want to get into where I'm like you know slicing and dicing like the uh, Jinsu uh, sushi maker Japanese guy with the big hat throwing it on the thing. And you're like, man, I'm all chopped up. Can you put me back together? No, I'm not. I don't want to do that right now. I want to stay in this nice. You know, prophetic flow for a minute. I'll get into some other things from there. But. but the Lord says, passion for purpose and pursuit for progress. Whoa, that's powerful. Passion for purpose and pursuit for progress will, is what I will answer by fire. And all, it's sometimes it's like the others need not apply because they're not fit for it. God knows that. Let me prophesy and say this, but by the Spirit. Everything is gonna be so huge and so grandiose and so absolutely flipping amazing, you won't even know what to say. You'll gasp and lose your breath and say, my God, look what happened. The Lord says, I have all of that ready I have all of that in my mind and prepared, but the issue now is the people that will catch the fire and run with the vision and begin to rise to the occasion. There's a saying that says, some will, some won't, so what? The acronym of that, the letters is SW, SW, SW. SW, SW, SW. Some will, some won't, so what? What God wants will happen. I was just in a place today, uh, just came from there, but it was, it was brutal. <laughs> Getting there, you know, had to pull the, 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 the vehicle so close to the front door not to get, to lose your shoes in the mud. You know what I mean? You know those kind of places? And if someone wants to use the bathroom, you know, it means like go down there. And I said, I'm not going down there. I'm not going. I'm a man. I'm a real man. I said, I'll, you know, is, is this somebody's front door? Because I could make it happen right here. You know what I'm saying? Before I go in. I mean, not the whole thing, just the one thing, you know. The, you know, you get me. You get me. So I was like, oh, that might be someone's front door to their house. You know, people's houses, you know, sometimes it's like this little thing you make. I said, I don't want to do that on someone's front door, you know what I mean? They might get mad. Rightfully so. So, so they were saying, well, that's the only thing that's available here. And I just drank like, uh, 
half a gallon of water, you know what I mean, before going to preach. So I thought, okay, drive me down there in the mud. Back the car down, drive, drive. I sit in my car. I sit in the vehicle, drive all the way down there, get as close as you can, and I'm gonna try. And you open the door, you know what I mean? And you get hit with this odor, and you look down, and there's just this little floor with a hole in it. I thought, what, 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 what is this? And you know, the Lord had me to say prophetically that a king's or a queen's bathroom is not like that. Lift your hand. You're not ready for me, but I'm here. A king or a queen's boudoir, French saying of it, is not like that. So I said there should be lighting, there should be music, there should be hand towels, there should be beautiful you know, decor on the wall, a nice little Egyptian, you know, or some kind of table, you know, made out of some nice onyx, you know, the, or that mother of pearl kind of thing. I, I have those in my house. And you have everything right and, and everything. And the royal throne that's there, you know what I mean? Hello. Hello. And uh, people started shouting. I was shocked. People started shouting. They were like, yes. And I said, Kenya is really going to be developed like that. Lift your hands. All of these towns and all of these cities and all of these places are going to be developed. Amen. Lift your hands if you believe and say, Lord, I want it like that for me. I want it like that for our country. I want it like that for our people. And the Lord says, watch, the, it's going to be unfamiliar. It's going to happen so fast like some towns are, like we prophesied over Westlands. How many remember that? when it was nothing. Little iron sheet curio shacks with people doing witchcraft and bats flying over the place at night. The bats would sleep in the day and come out at night and fly in circles over the place because all the witchcraft going on. People trying to do witchcraft just to sell things to get some money. And I prophesied against that thing and I said it's going to be blown out. I don't care who doesn't like it. That needs to go. And people looked at me like, how can you dare say that? I said, well, I said it. And that was it. I walked away. Now, now look. Just this week, they opened the whole road there. Lift your hands. Have you go to Westlands and see what it is now? Yes. And I don't know anybody here that spoke like that. Nobody. Even they call themselves a prophet, or a pastor, or an apostle, or a big pastor, or a little pastor, or a medium, or in between. Nobody said anything like that. Never heard it. Have you? I've never heard it. Have you? But God sent me here. People said they're people. She said people fear men. I, I thought people tell me they're afraid of me. Like you know, they see me, they go running away. <laughs> like who's this man? He come to bless us or kill us? Well, they said that of the prophets of old. Remember when uh, Samuel was on the circuit and showed up at a city? The elders came and fell down at his feet and says. Man of God, have you come to judge us or bless us? And they were crying, you know, shaking. You know what I mean? Because they knew the, pro the prophet had the power. Do you know when Samuel told Saul, King Saul, to not leave any of the enemy army alive? And he did, and I, there's a movie out called King David. It's really, it's really not good to watch. It's really not that pleasant to watch. I was pretty shocked. I don't think I watched, I don't think I stayed through the whole thing. But someone put that on. And uh, Samuel took a sword and cut the other, the evil king's head off and said, sorry if this is too much, but it's a good point. And, uh, and said, this is what you were supposed to do, but you were too weak to do it. Do you know, King Saul left some people that God said they shouldn't be, and they've gone down the lineage, and now you see all the trouble in the earth. Lift your hands. You see all the trouble in the earth from the other people. How many know what I'm talking about? And some of the ones that blow up your people and slaughter your people in your malls and your shops and do all kinds of things. Some of them, God was trying to preempt some of that. But the weakness of man didn't, didn't, didn't go all the way to what God said. And that, and the, and the, and the, the analogy of that point is to let you know that whatever God says, that's what we should do. 
however far God says to take it, however aggressive it's, it is, that's what we need to do because multitudes of people, even millions of people are going to be blessed. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's just go into prayer for a minute. Just lift your hands and speak in tongues. Pray. Let the Lord do something fresh in you to break you out of all of your apprehension and fear and timidity and the control, the manipulation of man over you. I don't, I don't know if it's your family. I don't know if it's a pastor. I don't know if it's a church organization. I don't know if it's a community. I don't know if it's a tribal thing. I don't know if it's uh, at some kind of environment or atmosphere. You need to be free to have full expression to advance the kingdom. Whatever God says to be, that needs to be done, this is what needs to happen. And I told a, a senior man in the government yesterday, a very, I won't say more details, a very, very high operative who's doing things for us. I said, you know what? Keep praying. Let's pray. I'm going to keep talking while we're praying, but it's prayer time right now. I want to hear somebody praying. Because, you know, in the midst of this, the anointing is going to fall upon you, and you're going to begin to get free. This is powerful. This is different. I feel a real prophetic fire here. I, I love this. I love this. You know, I was sitting downstairs just relaxing, meditating for a minute in my, in my office, uh, and I just... Uh, my mobile office. <laughs> and I was just sitting there meditating. I was thinking, I really don't want to do a teaching today. I really don't feel like I'm, I'm very interested in doing a teaching. I just want to release some things and we'll do a, a few other things. But I feel this prophetic fire. I feel this prophetic fire. And my God, I have teachings. Last Sunday I taught, oh my God, it was off the chain. You need to watch that video. Oh my, 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 my. It was out of this world. Life altering, life changing, life enhancing, life advancing. But there's a thrust coming. There's something new that's happened. The anointing is going to come on people to set them free. And I told this man, this, this government, uh, great, great guy in the government, I said, you know, people are so full of their vibrations of desperation. It could be greed. It could be need. It could be lack. It could be, and they have all this thing, and it clouds the atmosphere. I said, if I have somebody come to do something, I might have them do it like one day, and then I'll take like three days before I have somebody come again because I need my space. I need my, my place. And he, he looked and shook his head and said, that's really great, man of God. You need that. I, I agree with that. I, I understand what you're saying. To have the time with God, to do, to do what? To be able to have the full expression of heaven on the earth. And if we don't do that, then we're all clouded up. With all these other isms, schisms, people, philo I mean, ideologies and, and atmospheres and environments that are just full of demons, full of tension, full of stress, full of fear, full of uh, deception, full of all kinds of stuff. And people don't know that they live in that kind of chaos and stress all their life, wonder why and people die young. If you had to stand in the road in the mud in the rain and wait for some vehicle to get in just to cram yourself in there with all kinds of noise and then they blast music. What is that devil? They try to blow people's heads off while they're sitting in a, in a, in a, in a vehicle or something. My God, I heard this story of the Maasai that told them to turn it off but they, they refused. So the Maasai took his rungu and smashed all the speakers and then everybody went quiet including the sound. And he says, I want to sit here. He's a man that knows he needs to meditate. A Maasai warrior from the, from the field, man, from out there in the, in the open land. They're the ones that can focus enough to kill a lion, to, to, to get prey so fast, so sharp, so quick. They have to have that time to focus and be free in their mind to express themselves the way God gave them the gift to express themselves. And so few people have that. And I'm not telling you you need to be alone, go away, and you know, if there's a time to fast and pray and go somewhere in a quiet place, oh, that's always a good thing. But you don't have to live that all your, all your life, but you do have to be in control of your own space. You do have to be in control of your own environment. You do have to be in control of, of you know, what's around you and who comes and who goes and who doesn't, you know, people can just unnerve you because they have demons. They don't need to be in your presence. You can pray for them and they can get delivered, and I hope that happens. 
But you don't need to let them mess up your, come on, keep praying. You don't need to let them mess up your atmosphere and environment. I arose early this morning after a very long day yesterday. And the Lord woke me up and he spoke to me something powerful. And I was just in a church and I thought maybe I'd speak it there. And the Lord would not let me do it because it wasn't to be released there. You know, you have pearls and treasures. And I feel in this season and hour, I want to give more to our people. I want to give more. I want to give more to my partners in the ministry, people in covenant with me, people that love me, people that I love, people that support the work, people that sow, people that pray, people that serve. Come on. In the order of dominion, in the order of you know the ministry, the uh, uh, international ministry, I want I want to be able to give more to to you, and that's where this is going. It's going to become apostolic. I'm telling you, it's going to become a a tribe of our own. It's going to become a community that's going to encompass and move throughout the nations of the world. I'm telling you, and it's gonna it's gonna go all through this country that we're in right here. And, 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 and this whole region of the world. And many networks, many connections, many businesses, many people in government, many people. And, and, it, and if pastors and churches want to connect and be a part of it, fine. If not, it's okay. We still love them. We still bless them. But I'm telling you, there's something being raised up. There's something being raised up. I went to a church to speak and the Lord didn't let me speak and he said no he just said no like that no 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 and then I took out one of my books and I thought I was gonna have time to get into that a little bit and the Lord said no and I just began to speak and prophesy prayed over the children prayed over the region prayed over the people prayed over the whole community in the town and found out coming out of there it's like the biggest market in this part of the world one of the biggest markets in this part of the world I had no idea and it's full of mud shanty looking thing and the Lord showed me a vision that this will become a developed area now we drive down the road a little bit and all of a sudden there's a new road being made there a new what do you call bypass or highway being made there to come to there and I saw this thing being erected somebody lift your hands and get excited and this thing is going to become sophisticated it's going to become dignified it's going to become developed and I saw, I saw our people all in there, that I'd be the prophet and the pastor to many of those business people. And we can go by hand and give them our materials and they could read and succeed in business. And it doesn't have to have anything to do with any four walls church, because we're in the church without walls. We, we, are, we are in the kingdom without borders. You understand that? The whole world is our place. The whole world is our place. By the spirit of grace. Amen. The whole world. And wherever you set your foot, you know, he told Joshua. Ha-po-shekala. Joshua. My God. He told him. Wherever you put the sole of your feet, there I've given it to you. My God, the anointing's falling in here. Woo, Jesus, just received the touch of heaven right now. And people need to be here. They need to be with us. It doesn't matter if we have a big meeting, a small meeting, in between, together. When we get together, the mantle is upon me. Just something is imparted. We had two ladies, we have two ladies here now. They they met me in the they met me in the in a place that stood outside my car and the power of God hit them. It doesn't matter where we are. But we need to have that interaction because there's a release and there's, a, there's an impartation and there's a transference. The glory is falling here right now. I don't know if you could feel it. I feel it. The tangible presence of the Holy Ghost is in this place right now. He's here. He just walked in here. He's coming. Receive the anointing fire right now. Some of you are going to succeed. Some of you are going to catapult up. Some of you have been in churches. You've been in environments. You've been in your job or your place or business or whatever you're doing. And you've just been stuck in the same kind of modality for years and years and years. And, and, and you never saw that next level, that next step. Although it's always promised. You know, it's always promised. You know, God's going to bless you. Ah, he's a favor. And it's preached and it's shouted. And we go, amen. And 
we speak in our Christianese and we read our one or two Christian books here and there, watch a few programs, visit a Sunday service, do a conference, you know. And, then, you know, that, I mean, that's innocent. I mean, that's not wrong. What else are we going to do? What else are we going to do? You're there. You're going to go to church. You're going to do. But, but you haven't seen that step over because of what I'm talking about here. You need to get free from all the encumbrances of people and systems and situations to really experience the tangible visitation of the Holy Ghost upon your life personally and then let him give you the instructions on what happens now. And I am very extremely thrilled beyond what I can even articulate that God has put his hand upon me in this way to so liberate people, to so empower people, to so give them the breakthrough. And not even for one or two uh, individually face to face here and there or, or hundreds or thousands but literally for even millions of people in an entire nation being transformed and revolutionized because of the prophetic voice that God has raised up as his own oracle to speak to multiply millions of people this is an amazing phenomenon thus the warfare but we don't want to talk about that right now thus the battles but when God sees you're faithful, oh my, he'll bless you. He'll give you millions. He'll give you millions, he'll give you millions of people. He'll give you that, because he can trust you. Faithfulness is the key to promotion. But not in the wrong thing. Faithfulness to a liberation anointing. Connection with it first, of course, can loose you from even generations of problems. Lift your hands, everybody. Let's keep praying. Wow. Generational curses and all kinds of complications. The Lord wants to set you free. I speak to the ovaries in a woman that's listening right now, or you're here, that and your, your reproductive organs, the female thing, any tumor, any growth, any problem, any abnormality, I curse the thing and I command it to, to change and to wither up and just dissolve and disappear. And I command complete healing in that part of the body. I command in the digestive system a, a, a breakthrough and a freedom like has never been seen in the, in the way of how the body functions well. And the Lord says new energy, new strength, new health is going to come upon you and healing because I need you in my service, says the Lord. I need you in my service. I've, I'm ordaining you into something new that I am about to do. And I'm going to heal you. I'm going to free you. I'm going to break the oppression off of you. I tell you, people being healed right now, are you, uh, I, more than I know, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm seeing it and hearing it, but I, 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 I don't want to limit, even in my own imagination, how much God, how much God is moving right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now. I see somebody physically like you have a, a, a swelling somewhere or something. It's just going to go whoosh, down and go. And you're going to look and see. I don't know what was there, but something was there, but now it's not there. Stiffness in the joints, pain, anywhere. Pain, pain is a nervous sensory thing that God put in the body to let us know there's a problem. When you feel pain, it's like an indicator system like a radar of the whole thing and then the pain comes not just to afflict you but to let to let one know there's a problem something's out of place something's wrong and when the pain goes it's not just like taking uh, painkillers and you hope the pain diminishes no it's it means the problem has been fixed I command healing across waves of healing across even people that are not even 
near us in physical reality, but they're in the spirit, out there in the spirit, out there through the, the airwaves. And I command the healing fire is going to hit people. And I declare, thank you, Lord. The Lord is telling me right now, this is amazing. This is amazing what he's telling me right now. He's saying this to me right now. So whoever comes near you, their life will be radically transformed. Amen. Even within seconds, minutes, hours, and days. Healings, deliverances, breakthrough, eyes coming open, clouds of oppression going. And the Lord says again, don't look to the right or the left. Just stay focused on what I'm doing. Don't listen to people. Don't listen to voices. That other third voice that comes to hinder and spoil. Or people that you, know, you think should be like moved by something and then they're lost in a bunch of other things. That's their problem. You know, the Lord is, is giving us this, this, it's a very serious thing, like a, a command to come up hither before the throne of God and present yourself. And present yourself, even here on the earth, and say, now, I, I want to be able to hear God clearly and really do what he wants me to do. This is crucial to stepping over into the next season. Because if you don't do that first, then God can't come and bring you anywhere. Second. So we always say, well, I'm waiting for God, I'm waiting for God. You know, God even told Adam to keep the garden, to guard it. Oh, that's, 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 that's a painful revelation. Especially if you've ever been stolen from, or you lost things, or you trusted the wrong people. I know I have. Anybody ever trusted the wrong person? Can you be honest and wave your hand? Uh, you've never trusted anybody wrong? You ever been lied to, stolen from, deceived, betrayed? Anybody? Oh, yeah. So after that, you know, you need to break free of all that and get into the place where God and you are now ready to move and do something. Let's pray again. The presence of the Lord is moving here. Fresh fire, fresh visitation. Fresh glory, fresh impartation. And the Lord said last week, I'm amazed at this, because I really didn't know how this was going to happen, how it was going to flow, but I just felt the free flow here and not to do any formal message. But this is a very formal message, by the way, actually. <laughs> this is very powerful, it's very weighty. But last week, the Lord had me teach a, a prophetic word he spoke. He said, tell people the money's coming. The wealth is coming, the prosperity is coming, the blessing is coming. I know it's happening, it's happening. I, I don't want to start to testify, we'd never get out of here. The sun would go down and come up again, I'd still be talking. We'd be here tomorrow afternoon and people would be like on the floor sleeping after so many hours and just testifying the things that are, are actually happening, have happened, are happening, and are just about to happen. My God, you, you, you have no idea. You know, there's a realm that you get into in the realm, I don't know if you want to call it maturity or a lot of experience. You become very wise, you know, in your young age. <laughs> People ask me, what's my age? I don't tell them anymore. I say, well, Methuselah was 969 years old and a millennial is about 18, right? So I said, I'm in, there, I'm in between there somewhere. I'm a little a few weeks older than a millennial, but I'm a lot younger than Methuselah. So let's figure it out where I'm, I'm somewhere in. And I, and I look younger than I am. Why? Because I think young. And someone, someone said to me the other day something about a certain age bracket, like what people do. This is in the system, you know? Like you work on a job for so many, de a few decades, and then you have to think about, you know, they call it retirement or what, and then you get to this certain age, I'm like, huh! I never even thought, I never even crossed my mind. Praise God! Amen. I'm running around the world like I'm 25 years old, but I'm not. That's how I feel, that's how I think. Maybe that's why I look so good. Don't worry, it just gets some white is coming out here, it comes once in a while, and I, I have a nice remedy for this. See me next time, it'll be a different color. <laughs> called paint, you know, paint for men. I believe in that. Shoot. 
You may see these people that lost their minds and they want to walk around with gray hair. I'm like, knock yourself out. Some young people, are, the millennials, they really lost their minds. They want to dye their hair gray to look older. I'm like, got some screws somewhere. Praise God. You should take care of yourself. Look good. Look young, forever young. We don't use the O word around here. You know the O word? O L, and there's another letter. We don't use that word. We're all young. Is that right? Lift your hands. Your youth, youth will spring forth like the eagle. Don't ever, don't ever listen to people when they start saying about certain age brackets or this or that. Rebuke it, even if you have to do it under your breath. You ever see someone come up to say, well, an accident could happen, this, whatever? I said, not to me. If you walk around with me, how, 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 where's my guy? Have you heard me say that? I say, not to me. I always answer back. Whatever someone says, I answer back what I want it to be. I cancel it out. I refuse. My Lord. I refuse. I was just with some elephants the other day. They make some kind of sounds. I was wondering if one crept in here now. All right, praise God. Lift your hands. I never let anybody say or speak anything contrary to what the word says or contrary to what I want to happen. Never say anything out of your mouth that you don't want to become a reality. I don't care what it is. And, and, when, and, and as you get on, you know, in life, walking in life a bit, walking with God for some time, you can really get a hold of that. Someone said, well, they have a problem. I said, I don't. Someone said, well, this could happen. No, it can't. Not to me. And people drive around and said, you could be what? The A word. By those blue shirt guys on the road. You know what I mean? You could be a something. Don't say it. I said, not me. Never going to happen. You lying devil. You think these small boys with blue shirts are going to tell me what to do? I'm on a divine mission. I don't have time for that foolishness. Did you hear what I said? You said, oh, that's, that's crazy. How could you say that? I've said it. That's how it is. And now I have a network of friends. I just make a call or two and give them the phone. They go, sorry, sir. And they bow like to a king, which I really am anyway. Amen. Under the king of kings, I'm one of those. And the Lord of law, I'm one of those. And I'm on a divine mission. I don't need to be distracted by all this foolishness and oppression. Some people are terrified of everything. They're scared of everything. The, the societal, what you call the societal norms, have surrounded them. You can't really have covenant with a person like that if you want to live a big, free life. Hello. This is good. This is good right here. Some people... Can I just talk to you like a father? I'm kind of doing it. Can I just tell you something? You, some people, you know, get so caught up and hung up on all these little things that really don't mean anything. Like they don't like it like this, they don't like that, they don't want that. I'm like, what, what do you want? And I, let me not even ask the question. I don't know if I care anyway. I'm, my mind is somewhere else. That's why visionaries need detail people. Visionary is like, in another dimension, looking at the vision, the, the thing that God is saying, the whole thing, hearing God, wanting to implement something huge. But then there is the reality of the details. So we need, you know, they fit together. But some of these details are boring to a busy person, to a powerful leader. Some things just don't matter. And I'm glad where there's a will, there's a way. Can I tell you something? The rules, well, I don't know if I can say this or not. Is this an advanced class? Are you mature people? Can you handle this? I can't say this everywhere. People think I'm going somewhere else. Let me, well, maybe, maybe I'll refrain on that. But what they call, well, let me just say it anyway, since I said I, I can't just tease you like that. I got to tell you. Uh, maybe I'll say it in a, 
in a clever, in a cute way that you don't get the whole point. But rules and regulations, you know, rules and regulations, what they call the rules and regs, you know, some of those are just meant to be broken. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can hear a pin drop in here. Can you lift your hands and get free? I, I, see the devil. The, the devil's going. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not telling you to be rebellious. I wouldn't do that. You know, there's the laws of protocol, there's the laws of the land, there's the laws of government. Yeah, you gotta follow those, oh yes. But a lot of these things that people call the rules and regs, you know, it's this way and this way and this way. Somebody else painted that on your imagination and enslaved you into that way of living when God is not there, he's way over here. In fact, he's way ahead down the road waiting for you to run and catch up with where he is. Lift your hands. You, you're stuck back here with your life, with all this stress and all these things spinning around, and you kind of, one day goes to the next, and then the next week goes to the next, and then the week goes to the month, the th four weeks go to the month, and the month go to the quarter three, and then the four quarters go to a year, and now you're in the next year, and you're still like kind of like there, where you were. That's not God. You know, even the eagle will make a new nest for its family and eaglets every year. And you know, when the little eaglet, the little baby bird eaglet, grows to a certain point, it's still young, it's still not so developed, it's not really mature, still scared, still young, and the mother eagle will start to push the eaglet into the sharp sticks on the side of the nest to like make it uncomfortable, stirring up the eagle's nest. And then if the bird won't get up and fly, the mother will take the eaglet, the, the, the eagle, mama will take the eaglet up in the air, way high, and then drop him says now it's fly or die and that baby eagle let me tell you something it's going to spread its wings and fly and then it'll be happy it did then it goes on to its destiny so God will also stir up the nest lift your hands God will stir up he'll trouble the things around you I had the Lord speak to me in a certain thing I was doing and something happened and the Lord said I said, Lord, look at this. He said, it's going to get worse. He said, the one that told me to prophesy that Mwai Kibaki will be elected in 2002. The, one that, the, the God that told me to prophesy in the year 2000 that the Moy regime would collapse and there would be a new government formed in Kenya. You weren't here. You weren't, you weren't with me then. But I have photographs of me in the KICC with 5,000 people with their hands up, or 6,000 people, crammed in there, standing around the walls, no chairs, I don't know of an event that's had a crowd like that since, but I was there. And I have the photographs. I could show you in my phone. Come and, come and ask me, I'll show you. Here it is. Here's the picture. I think it's on my website. Me standing with my hand up, thousands of hands up. When I was prophesying about the collapse of the old government and the new government coming in, people got scared. Thank God I went right, I went to the airport and flew right out. And Kenya was so backward back then, this is in the year 2000, that the restaurant, it was called Simba. Nice name, I like Simba. And find my 500 note, the new Simba, the new money. Beautiful. The 500 green note with Simba on the back. Tell me that's not beautiful. That's a masterpiece. The thousands are a little bit funny looking, that brown color, you know. But I like the, I like the 500 note, the new one. With Simba. So Simba restaurant. So we sat there and ordered some food and people were missing their flights. People were griping and complaining and those people were so slow. They would bring nothing out. So I, I, I got the manager and I said, I'm going to write you a note. I wrote it on the, on the receipt. I said, Simba restaurant, order today, eat tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe, dot, dot, dot. And I said, uh, sir, we, uh, ma'am, whoever it was, we have a flight to catch, you know what I mean? And I'm flying to London and I gotta be on that plane. I'm not gonna, even if we order, even if we order and don't eat, fine, but I'm going. Things were different back then. And, I pro and then God had me prophesy about the, how the city would be revamped, Nairobi. Nobody could imagine it. People told me it's a city under the sun. Street people, 
You remember that? How many are old enough to remember that? Mess, holes everywhere, no street lights, no buildings, no development, just a few of the old buildings, just like that. And then I said, I saw gardens, I saw trees, I saw skyscraper buildings. People looked at me like I was mad. And I said, I'm telling you, thus saith the Lord, this will happen. Same God that told me all those things, I was, something was going on. And the Lord said to me, it's going to get worse. And it did. Within some days. Very bad. I was disturbed. I was like, whoa, what is this? And the Lord was stirring me up. I'm talking about the stirring of the eagle's nest. And you know what it was, too? It was so God can get me back to Africa. Lift your hands. You better thank God that God will stir somebody's nest. And it was strenuous and crazy. I won't tell you all the details, but we got here. And when, when I hit here, I was so tired. I was feeling so ruffled. I was feeling jet lag. I was feeling, I don't know, it was just rough this time coming. Usually I have a bit more grave, just more easy. This time it was, it was brutal. It was like devastating. I've been on a long fast. I lost about 30 pounds, which is good. It made me feel good. I feel better. It doesn't make you feel worse. It makes you feel better. And if God was preparing this next thing, and I get here, all these things start happening. And it seems when, I, when I'm here, Kenya starts to fly well. When I leave, things decline. And some of our people here that have been with me for a long time, they could tell you a lot of testimonies about that. Am I right? And people nodding their heads, you know, you could say the details better than I can. You're here. But God is raising up, listen to me, this is the word of the Lord, are you ready? Here's the title, sometimes I like, to, I like to deliver and then I give the title at the end. You ready for the title? The Joshua Generation. The Joshua Company, the Joshua people. Now there was Moses, and then the people were so imparted to by the move of God that they begin to flourish and come up. And God told Joshua two things. Chapter 1, verse 3, he said, Nobody will be able to stand before you all the days of your life, and wherever you put the sole of your feet there, I've given that to you. Do you know that's literal? Do you know you could set your foot into a building and claim it? Sister Liz, you can do it and say, this is mine, and people could say you're crazy. Like I met this uh, Mize, this old Mize, who people said he was crazy. Back in the 70s, he was going to the, the registrar's office for companies, and he was telling them what he wanted to do. And they told him he couldn't do it. He kept going, kept going. It took him years, and he founded one of the largest banks. He's a multi-billionaire. Lift your hands. I'm telling you, and he was a, a little guy by himself with a dream. And I said, let me ask around this guy's name. And people said, oh, yes. Oh, he's the one. He's the one. He's very, very, he's very extremely, extraordinarily successful. Started with nothing. Literally, when you get it in your mind what God wants to do, and you believe it and receive it. Now, Mark eleven twenty four 24 said, whatever things you desire and want when you're praying, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Mark eleven twenty three said, speak to the mountain in faith and the mountain can actually be moved. Do you know there's a story back in uh, many centuries ago, very long time ago, I don't know if it was the 1400s or, no, maybe it was the 1200s. I, I think it was 1225 was the year, something like that. Somewhere in the Middle East. And this Muslim ruler came to the people and said, uh, and they, they were a Christian community, and the Muslim raider came in and said, uh, this Bible, people have been telling me about the Bible. He says, he says I'm going to give you a, a commission. I'm giving you two weeks or whatever it was, 10, 10 days or 12 days or, to make this verse manifest. And if it doesn't work, then I can't believe in you or your God 
and I'll kill you all and take your land. Lift your hands. How's that for a nice guy? And, and you, know, you, know, you know he wasn't kidding, right? You know he wasn't kidding. You know they, these people do those things. Look at ISIS going through Iraq just killing people. Look at Boko Haram in Nigeria just going through a whole village and slaughtering people. And they just, are they doing it? Have they killed people? Yes or no? So if they say they're going to do something, you know what I mean? It's real. So they found a man who was very devoted. I won't tell the whole story. He, he had a serious trial in his life that he had to believe God, and he was the one that had faith. I won't tell the whole story right now. There's more to the story, but another time. But, um, and they got this guy, and he refused. He says, no, I don't want to do that. He said, they said we have to, have to move a mountain. The mountain that's there, this guy wants it moved or else he's going to come and kill the whole place and take over. That's what, that, that, was the, uh, dec that was the threat. And you know the people prayed and fasted, and this one guy that was powerful that had faith, listen, he spoke to the mountain, and the mountain disappeared. And this guy came back and saw it was gone. They all saw it before their eyes. So I guess many of them got saved and they just relented and left them alone. Lift your hands. That's literal then what God says to us in his word. But do we believe him on that level to take it by force? Joshua 1.3. No man will stand before you like this devil, demonic guy with his threats will stand. And he said, wherever you put the sole of your feet, I've given it to you. And then verse 9. No, ver no. verse 9, he said, uh, fear not. I command you to be of good courage. Verse 8, Joshua 1, 8. He said, meditate in the word and God's law day and night. And then you shall make your way prosperous. And then you shall have good success. Now, the only place we find God in that verse is meditate in his law and his word. His law and his word. In other words, it's there. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? It's there, but what are you going to do with it? Just because it's there it doesn't mean that God's just going to make it happen all for you. He said, you meditate, you learn it, you study it, you pray, you believe, you work it out within yourself. And then you shall make your way prosperous. Did it say God is going to make your way prosperous? No, he didn't say that. It said you by your action are making your own way prosperous. It's the same thing with tithing. It's the same thing with sowing seed. It's the same thing with being diligent in business. You're the one that takes the action based on the law of God, and then God answers your action. It's the same thing with consecration to him. It's the same thing with loyalty to an individual or, or, or a ministry or a leader or, or situation. It's the same thing with your business life. It's up to you to begin to walk it out. Lift your hand. It's up to you. It's up to you. My hands are raised to God. I'm telling you, it's up to us. Father, thank you. You give the opportunity. You even blessed Adam with so much. And Adam could not sit back and just uh, uh, leave it to chance. And actually, he did. Just that and lost the whole thing. Paradise received, gained, now became paradise lost. Because he sat back on it. He didn't know how bad the devil was. He didn't know what the plan of Satan was when he came in the form of a serpent to beguile Eve. And then he listened to Eve, and he just, he forgot what God had said. And it was taken from him what he had. How sad. How tragic. And then the Lord had to raise up the second Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, and send him to rescue us all. Or else we'd all be doomed. But Adam had it all. He had it all. He was the richest man that ever lived was Adam. The richest man that ever lived was Adam. He had everything. Imagine that. Joshua was trained well by Moses. 
Elisha was well trained by Elijah. Jonathan learned a lot from David, but that's a different kind of thing. And then you see uh, David's own son Absalom was a mess. And Solomon kind of had the heart to walk in it, though he had some issues himself. And he inherited the whole thing. And Absalom lost the whole thing. Two children of the same father. Look at Jacob and Esau, right? Was it Jacob and Esau? Yeah, it was Isaac and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob and Esau. Esau was actually going to get the blessing from Joseph, the daddy. Imagine. Imagine. And Jacob found a way to be passionate and pursue and even do some funny thing to get it. And he got it. Is that passionate? Is that pursuit? And then guess what? He, went, he, he wanted this woman, Rachel, and Laban, the one who was going to give the woman to him, supposedly, as the story goes, tricked him. But guess what? Jacob had the blessing. Whew, look at that. Jacob had the blessing. He had the blessing. So down the road, it looked like Laban was winning over him, but then Jacob got a profound entrepreneurial idea to make psychedelic animals. <laughs> With the patterns and the stripes and the spots. But he cut out, he carved out, he saw it in a vision, I'm sure, carved out pieces. And then when the cows, the animals, even the sheep and the goats, I'm sure the other one, when they were copulating, what was in front of their eyes got stamped somehow in the DNA. And then they were amazed to see that the, the calves of the cows and all that now were, were multicolored, multi-patterned. Imagine that. And then his, his livestock was able to flood the market and sell for more than Laban's stuff all put together. So in the end, Laban was ashamed and Jacob was elevated. I don't care what happens in your life when the hand of God is upon you. Oh my God. When the presence, I feel the anointing so strong. When the presence of the Lord is, is tangible and resident upon your life, God will make a way where there's no way. He'll find a way to bless you. He'll find multiplied ways to bless you in ways and measures like you've never ever seen in your life. Amen. Like those around you have never seen. I was near this market. I'm trying to remember the name of it right now. What's the name of that market? You forgot to? Tomas. Tomas. I like the way you say Tomas. Manton. Tomas. Wa Thomas, yeah, Wa and Gigi, right? And Gigi. That place is a mess, but they say it's the biggest market around. And God had me prophesy today, a few hours ago, that the place would be revamped, and made into something great. And I happen to be in the church. God bless the church. God bless the pastor. God bless his wife. God bless the children. God bless all the people there. And all the babies, you know, a phenomenon happened. The Lord spoke to me. It's on video. You see it. And we have the we we'll have the photographs on. The Lord spoke to me to pray for the children. Before I came in, and when I got on the platform, I just said something about the children, and all these children start running to the platform, running to the front, and I was like, "Whoa!" I said, "Lord, this is the Holy Ghost. Let them all come right now. Let's not wait." It was like three minutes into my message. It wasn't anywhere toward the middle of the end. And I spoke, I spoke a total of 30 minutes, three zero, one half hour, would, would turn the whole environment of that town. Lift your hands right now by the prophetic. The, listen, this is not possible for man. This has nothing to do with a person. This is Jehovah choosing to anoint someone to bring this thing into motion. It's phenomenal. And at Katundu South, the president's home, we were there the week before. 
And the Lord had me prophesy about a miracle in law enforcement that would come. And within 24 hours, listen to this, within 24 hours, the government came in and transferred out all of the police bosses, changed the whole guard of the whole thing, sent them all out, and they're bringing the whole thing in. And that's just what the mouth of the Lord had spoken less than 24 hours before that. And the people that were doing the killings there, you know, they have a name. Don't say their name right now. You know, some of those people, they're trying to resurge now. They were hit by John Machuki, who I prophesied over, and his wife years ago, met with the wife, met with the president's family. And uh, Mr. Machuki was around, and he decided to hit them. It's, but there's trying to be a resurgence now. And some people were killed. And the news report the next night said they already captured five of them. They're going to be prosecuted. And that's just what the Lord said. That video is coming out, uh, I guess, from tomorrow. It'll be circulated of that, of that prophecy over that place. And it's embarrassing for the president because it's right in the president's home. You know, he has to really do something about it. But they hadn't done anything about it. But then God sent the prophet. Amen. Imagine that. And it instantly it was kicked into gear. I was in Gong, Gong Town. You know, the GPS lady doesn't know how to say it. She said, and Gong, and Gong Road something. I don't know. I was, I was laughing listening to the GPS. But it's Gong, you know. The N is a little bit silent, N-G-O-N-G, -G, you know. Gong. And I went there, and the Lord said there'll be road development. And he said Gong will become like a little business town, like a little small city. Do you know what's already happening? Do you know, within, within three or four days, the deputy president, William Ruto, went there, was sent to something happened, and decided to extend something even beyond what they originally planned. And he said for the development of the road and something in the business sector there, Little Gong Town. Some of you know it as just a quiet, you know, kind of place with big crater-sized potholes in the roads. But I'm telling you, the paved roads will go through there and buildings will be erected. Amen. Another town called Chuka, past Embu, going toward Meru. I think Embu's one way, Meru's the other way, and Chuka's that way. And it was just one lane road going through the whole place. Everything else was dirt and mud. When it rains, it's mud. When it's dry, it's dusty road. An old colonial town, over 100 years, never had any development like that. Some few buildings, you know, here and there, but not much. They told me today it's a new place. It's been paved. We prophesied about uh, some center of it being developed. Said now there's new beautiful hotels there. Someone lift your hands. It happened in Machacos. Machacos, it was just like a quiet place out there. And then they made the dual carriageway and the town started to be, de to be developed. And then God put this Alfred Matua into uh, the governorship and he has a mind to work. And then the Lord spoke to me about a new city that would be built. And now the Kansa city is coming up. And another city, another city outside Nairobi, which is not Kanza, that's a Machaco. But this tattoo city, right? Tattoo city. T-A-T-U, not T-A-T-O-O. -O. Coming up. Somebody lift your hands and rejoice at what's happening in your nation. Now we have skyscrapers going up. Do you know the governor decided to try to shut those Chinese buildings down? The minute I heard it, I, I, was, I think I was here when it happened. And I just shouted, no, he can't do that. You're not stopping that. That's part of the prophetic word that we gave. The buildings have to go up. I said, I don't care what anybody says. And within a few days, it's like there was, like there was no decree given. There was no stopping of anything. In fact, the Chinese are clever. You know what they did? They went and put like lighted signs on the outside of the places, like it's already open. <laughs> you know, like a new hotel with the beautiful you know, lit signs, you know, with the lights inside. They weren't there before. It was just flat like a concrete wall in a big construction site, really ugly. The roads are even almost collapsing from all the big trucks coming, carrying all the materials in there. 
They put it like it's already new. I was like, hats off to them. Let it go. It doesn't matter who used, it doesn't matter what you think of these foreigners or what. When those buildings go up and they're able to stand there, because the ground is a bit shaky. I said to somebody the other day, I said, hey, is that okay? Are those buildings going to, are those buildings, gonna, are they, you know? They said, no, prophet, they dug so deep. I said, did they get all the way, all the way down to where they hit solid bedrock? Yes. And you know, some people are so astute in business, unlike so many other people that are corrupt and lazy and untoward. They know that their name and their reputation is at stake. Can you imagine they put up a building like that if it ever fell? Whew! They'd be rounded up and deported. They'd probably, someone would even kill someone. Hello? They wouldn't risk that. But that's part of the word. Now you're seeing like these massive skyscrapers going up. Not like, not like 12 stories of an apartment building or 15. It's like 34 to 40 stories high. Imagine that. Here in your little African country. Somebody lift your hands. I tell you, this is amazing. In our little place here, there was just beautiful land that God made, but not much else was done with it. And all of a sudden, all this new development. And then the Lord sends me back again to prophesy and say, this is a season of economy, economic advancement, economic awakening, economic breakthrough, prosperity, a lifting up of the people. And it's marvelous in our eyes, isn't it? It's glorious and marvelous in our eyes, isn't it? But it's just the beginning. And the Lord spoke in one cheke. One? One gige. I know, I'd say it better than you, probably. One gige, yeah, one gige. Someone say one gigi. No, that's not it. It's one gege. One gige. I, and then the other one, and then an E at the end. I got it, I know. How did I get there? By the hand of God. Everything else was by the way. The mud roads, the loo down the way that I had to drive to. You know, all that's just like, it's part of the process. But I had to just stand there and prophesy. And it's worth it to do that. How far can you see? How far can you imagine? Because God said, I'll do more than you can ask or think. More than you've even thought of, heard, or imagined, even inside of your imagination or in your heart. God's going to do it. Just leave, put your hand on your heart right now and say, Lord, I am not going to be limited another day in my life. Say it loud. I'm not going to be limited another day in my life. Say it louder than that. You're still quiet. Say, I'm not going to be limited another day of my life. But Holy Ghost, you're releasing your fire upon me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet to be liberated, to be raised up, and to be thrust forth and it's going to be even quicker and even more glorious and more powerful than I have ever even imagined before. And this is the word of the Lord to us right now. Even quicker, even more, even more. And the Lord said to you earlier today, he said, the unknown. Don't fear the unknown, uncharted waters. It'll be even things you don't fully understand. God's going to begin to thrust us into that. Amen. We have to be like, you know, like on the autopilot sometimes a bit. Now, we have to do things again, but there's another side to it that God is like our, our pilot. You know what I mean? Blessings flowing by autopilot. Why? Because we're moving in the stream that he's moving in. We're flowing in the things that he's released unto us. And we've released ourselves from all other kinds of things and, and gone full into that. And the Lord will do beyond what we even asked or thought. Father, thank you for your touch. I pray that you'll give your sons and daughters tremendous courage, tremendous grace, tremendous boldness, fearlessness, a vicious, fierce passion to get through and to get broken through and to see your hand and to see what you want and to listen to your voice 
and to hear your clear direction and instruction and to be like infused with power, like a dude with power from on high, the dunamis of the Holy Ghost, the, the instruction giver who even gives instructions by ideas. You paint our imagination. You let us think. You let us dream. You let us see. And I pray right now for the opening of the eyes Amen. that what's clouded the vision and oppressed the minds is broken off of your people and our people who are part of this order uh, of this ministry, people that are going to flourish in business. Amen. They're going to prosper like they've never even thought before. Amen. And there's some people that are already doing okay. Some people are way down. Some people are middle. Some people are up. But the up, you're even going to go higher than they even thought and quicker. It's like, it's like I see like the Lord has got the bow and arrow and he's pulling it back, the string behind them, and then shooting them, releasing them, and they go so fast. They look around the speed that they're moving at. It becomes a little frightening. Like, how did I get on this, how did I get on this shot that I'm at? When I, when I haven't experienced that before, the Lord says, trust me. Do you trust me? Let me do what I want to do. I have good plans for you. When you're in my hand, says the Lord, uh, you're in the right place. I'm not going to do you any harm. I said through Jeremiah 20, in 29:11, I know the plans I have. And I said not to prosper you, yes, and not to harm you. Never to harm you, never to let you suffer harm. And it says even the shame that you suffer through situations, God said, I'll give you double for your trouble. For your shame, you'll have double. As I even said again in Isaiah 61, and said the wealth, the wealth of nations is even for you. As I said in Isaiah 60, the wealth of the Gentiles, those dromedaries, those camels moving, carrying things, because you're rising and shining, amen, to the place where I have to, uh, uh, ordained you to be lifted up. And the Lord says, though gross darkness covers the earth, it doesn't matter, my, and it's happening in our day, we see it, but my light shall be upon you, and kings will come to the brightness of your rising. And did I not say to Solomon, and I had him write in the Proverbs, that your gift will make room for you and bring you before kings, bring you before greatness, bring you before great dignitaries, bring you before great audiences and people, not just amongst the commoners and the mere low thinkers. God says, I want to remove many also out from those kind of environments and out from those companies of people, and I want to bring them up into a higher echelon, and I want to bring people up now, says the Lord, into what I've really ordained, which, uh, which are just things that are magnanimous, even beyond, again, what you've asked or thought, Amen. says the Lord. Get ready for it. It's coming now. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want somebody to give the Lord a praise. Go ahead and do it. You can do that. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give him some praise. Stand up on your feet and give God a shout. Go ahead. Let's stand for a minute and just give God a shout. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Your season of breakthrough has come. Your season of the uplift has come. Amen. Your season of the advancement from me, says the Lord, has come. Amen. Your season of being creative has come. Amen. The season for you to produce has come. Amen. To be productive, it's come. Amen. And as the Lord said in the beginning, passion for purpose and the pursuit for productivity. Very powerful. That's powerful. Passion for the purpose will bring you into the realm where you want to pursue being productive, a productive life, a helpful life, something that you'll build, something that you'll do that's never been done before. And the Lord says again, don't look to the right or to the left. Don't look, look at others. Look at what I'm telling you, direct, face to face. God says there's a new assignment. I, I, last week the Lord spoke to me. I'll say it again. There's a shift coming. Just let, let's just lift our hands. There's a shift 
there's a shift. I hear the Lord saying, I see it written in the clouds again. I, see, I could see it in a vision written in the sky. The shift is here. The shift has come. The new ordination for a new season, the release of the old, and a, and a, and a launching and, and an ordination, a coronation, an impartation, uh, 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 an appointing for the new thing. It has come forth. The Lord says, this is the day and the hour now for this to manifest in full fruition. Amen. Be ready for it because the Lord said it's not only, it's not coming, it's already here. Amen. And you're a part of it. I, amen. Praise God. Come on, come on, praise the Lord. I want to I want to tell you precious people by the Holy Ghost you know I love you right do you know I love you you, you love me I hope so yes. if you don't I'm used to it I the haters are idiots huh praise the Lord Amen. just just tell them kick rocks and keep moving it's okay we've seen you before the likes of you amen do you love me you know I love you right if someone doesn't know how to express themselves very well I pray you get delivered to become more romantic and affectionate, not in the wrong way, not in the wrong way, but just expressive, you know what I mean? That, that's part of freedom. You're not insecure, you're not afraid, yeah, okay, that's another, that's another seminar, praise the Lord, maybe one day, we'll, that's another seminar. But uh, there's, there's, there's a new assignment. Just lay your hand on your heart again, I just feel this, God is just reaching down and he's just releasing an impartation to people. And this is what I wanted to say, and I say this close, in closing here for the moment. Although we don't close, we just pause the screen and we pick it up next time. But uh, yes, Lord, the Lord is saying, from this very hour, right now, this very day, this Sunday, this very Sunday right now that we're in this day of Sunday, from this very day, this very hour, you're going to begin to experience new things after this touch from the Lord that has just come here. And your eyes are going to come open. You're going to see wrong things. You're going to go, oh, I allowed that. Oh, that wasted my time. Oh, that, oh this situation, this environment, that atmosphere, this, it's just going to be like that. The Lord says, don't be troubled by that. It's really, I'm blessing you to help you. I'm just enlightening your, illuminating you to be able to see things correctly. And sometimes when your eyes really come open to see something, it's, it could be painful. You know, there's an old movie, again, an old Bible kind of story like the King David I was talking about. You know, those old movies where they had the, the slaves down in the, uh, I guess it was the Israelites under the Egyptians, you know or whatever, or the Romans were punishing people, they put them down in the caves, and there was no light. And when they finally brought them out, they had to wrap their eyes. They had to wrap uh, cloths around their eyes because the light was so bright, it could literally blind them because their eyes had, had, had been transformed to, to uh, live in the darkness, and the, the light was just too bright. Sometimes the light of revelation could be like that. It's very bright, it's very sharp. You begin to see. The Lord says, don't be afraid of that. Embrace it and move accordingly. And shift and let everything shift. I hear this again, the shift has come, the shift has appeared. It's a shift in the, in the body of Christ. It's a shift for many people, for leadership, for strength, for advancement, for growth. I just had a, a, another, another senior man for the government who I was just with earlier today. We, he, he accompanied me to the meeting. And uh, God had me pray for him, and he was healed of cancer. He has no cancer in his body today. He's completely healed, and the devil wanted to kill him. And I, when I was, I was in America, and the, he told me, he said this, he testified of this. He says, he says, Prophet, you spoke to me on the phone, and you said, wait for me, I'm coming. Boy, that's touching. Wait for me. I told him. He said, I said, wait for me, I'm coming. You're not going to die. We have work to do. All that we talked about is going to happen. You're not going anywhere. And he took that. Ha! He took that. And more, more so than that, his faith, but also the fact that it was the word of the Lord and God honored that. Today he is completely cancer-free. 
And he just delivered. Some of you, maybe I'll let, uh, I'll let it out to be able to hear. I was recording him speaking as we were coming from the meeting, and he was reiterating the power of such things that are going to develop in the community, things that I had said prophetically in the meeting. Absolutely uncanny, absolutely supernatural and amazing. And he said to me, this is what he said. He said, we need to get a place. Yeah. And you know, I don't talk about it, but uh, I just keep flowing and delivering what God is saying. But we, we need to talk about it. We need to get a place. And he says, and he showed me this building. We walked into this building and it looked pretty sizable. But he said, isn't this even too small? I just nodded my head and said, yeah. yeah it is. But it's big. It's a big place, but it's already too small. He said, he said, prophet, I see once we have a place and the place is set, people will come from all over. You have no idea. They'll come from everywhere. It'll just be, he says, I see it, I see it, I see it. And, and, and this, is, this is really literally going to become a reality. Remember when I walked in here not knowing what I was about to prophesy all these things. And the Lord said, all these great things, I have them ready. They're out there. It's in my mind, the Lord said, to produce them. And it's going to happen. Shut your hands out toward me right now. And just pull on the grace of heaven that's upon my life. I'm a, pro I'm a prosperous man. I don't apologize to tell you that. I'm a blessed man. Everything I have is paid for. Everything I do is flush. It's blessed. And there's more. More and more coming. More and more things. I just got a message this morning from another continent. Not even America. Not even Europe. Another one. Not Africa. Another one that they just, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. No, I better not. It's huge. It's magnanimous. I'm not going to tell you. Not time, not time to testify yet. And we've been working on that for some time and blah, blah, blah. So make a demand. Pull on the grace. It's God's will for you to be rich. It's not his will for you to be poor. It's, it's his will for you to succeed and prosper and break through, not to be stuck and to lack and to be failing in anything. If some failure came your way because of trial and error, you learn from it. You learn from it. All the, big, all the big successful people, that's one of their buzzwords in their motivational speeches on TED Talks and all these, you know. All these marketing gurus and all, you know, all these people that are flooding the, uh, the social medias these days, trying to sell something, trying to sell their program or something, pitch on their program. They have this thing, well, failure is part of it. I just turned it off. I said, yeah, I know that already. Please, please. I know that already. I'm not trying to think about failure. I'm thinking about, I'm, I'm too, my mind is too enamored with success. And the word success is huge to me, to the point where, I, I'm, I, the Lord, I feel the Lord's going to have me instituted the name of that into something we're about to do. And I'm praying that through. And it's all going to be put together in a very short time. So, and I had some of that going on already, but now it's going to another level in many continents of the world. You know, we're not just here in Africa now. We're also in Europe. We're also in America, or North America. We're also in South America. Uh, in the Asian world is open, so many things are happening all over the planet. So we need help, we need assistance, we need people, we need creativity, we need the details. You know, the visionary needs the detailed people, people to implement stuff. And they're coming in, they're coming in. Everything's going to be put into motion in greater ways than we've known. Stretch your hands out toward me again and just make a pull. The, the blessing, Father, that you put on my life. Now, someone could claim this, but it's up to God who he's really going to let it fall upon. But I think from my experience, remember Paul said, I say this one thing not by the command of God, but I think I have the Spirit of God. In other words, I know I'm right in what I'm saying, but the Lord didn't tell me, command me to say this, but I know I'm right because I have the Spirit of God. But people that are serious, that plow, that sacrifice, like what I was saying there about they, 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 they pa have passion for purpose and then God gives them the pursuit for productivity and they, they work with those four things 
and really move in that, then God says, okay, now I'm going to reward you for your, your love and your passion and your faithfulness. And things are just going to begin to... It's a new season. I don't know what church you all been at. I mean, a lot of people go to different churches. That's fine. That's reality. But if you're with me, you're going to be blessed. Yeah. And I don't mean like, you know, I, I say it's going to happen. We, I have young people that are millionaires today. I have, I, there was one person that came for a house help job, crawled out of some little iron sheets place on the east side. You know the east side over there. You know the east part of it. Today they're running three businesses. And they don't look like they looked. They have posh, elegant, hair done, nails done, clothes, everything, jewelry, what, car, house, blah, offices, shops. This was a person from the ghetto that was looking to do like a 10K a month job. You know those kind of jobs where you just do cleaning and you just be quiet? And but inside of them was something greater. And God had me fish it out. And because of their loyalty, listen to me, not that they did so many things that were just so, that they solved so many problems on so many fronts, just because they were loyal. I want you to hear me, because they were, they had a good heart to be a true friend, not a Judas, not an Absalom, not a betrayer, not a double tongue, not a snake, you know, Nyoka, Panya, you know, these ugly creatures, not, not like that nature. They were real, genuine, a real sheep, a real lion, a real lioness, a real person, but loyal till today, and they're blessed. There's a man that came from Copenhagen, Denmark, businessman, he flew to London, England to see me. And while he's there, I didn't ask him for a thing. He's the one that called me and said, I'm coming to London. I said, are you sure? You want to come? You have a place. I've made arrangements at a hotel. I'm coming. I have to come and see the prophet just to spend time with you. He didn't like come to me all needy like some people. You know, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Give me the list. Da, 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 da. And that's okay. I'll take that. I'll pray, for, I'll pray for anybody. If you're stressed or you're desperate or what, hey, my light is open. I'll pray for you and I pray that God will touch you and raise you and bless you. Sure. But he didn't come like that. He was very quiet. He didn't have his list of things now. Okay, like we, we interacted for a minute, a few minutes, and now, oh, here's my, here's my agenda. He didn't do it. He never did it. He took me to the shop, bought me the new smartphone. This was some years ago when the smartphones were getting more popular. And he says, I perceive, you know, in his accent, his Danish accent, I perceive you need some computers for your office. Am I right? I said, yeah, we sure do. He bought me four computers, two of the top of the line in the world laptops, and two PCs and the monitors and all that, had them shipped to me, and then gave an offering, and then took me to Harrods, you know, Harrods, the, uh, the posh mall in the West End over there, in Knightsbridge, bought me a gold Gucci watch. And I wanna tell you what, what the price was. And I said, he said, you like this? I said, yeah. I, I said, I don't know. What do, you, what, do you, what do you mean do I like it? Why, why, I thought, why is he asking me that? I didn't ask him for anything. He did all that. He calls me sometime later, and he says a property came up for sale, but it's really tight for him to get it. What should I do? Now he's asking a question, because it's a serious thing. And the law, I said, let me get off the phone, let me pray. I don't want to just answer what's in, you know, what I would think or respond. I want to hear God. Give me some time. I hung up. And I went to pray, and the Lord spoke to me, tell him to do it. And he says, the property is, is next to the royal family's place. And he said, my daughter loves horses, and I love horses. And uh, it has an equestrian farm. It's a big estate. It's a big property. And he said, he used the word economy. You know, in his accent, he says, the economy is kind of, I don't know about the economy. That meant his pocket, his accounts, you know, his money. That's the, way, that's, the way, that's the word he used for it in his accent. And I said, well, and I told him, I said, the Lord said, do it. He said, I take it. I will. I'll, I'll let you know how it's going. He tells me later he bought the property for $3.6 million. $3.6 million U.S. dollars. That's what it cost. 
He's fairly successful in business, but he had to scrape all that money somehow and put it in there. And then he had to really shake, you know, be shaken a lot to think, I'm putting so much into this. Is this really the right thing? This is for his own personal resonance. Guess what? Ten months later, we talk again in less than one year. Remember this? Remember the scripture? Deuteronomy, no. Or is it Genesis? Genesis 26, yeah. Genesis 26, verse 12. Isaac sowed, and in the same year reaped a hundredfold. Well, that's a hundredfold. That was really great. But how, how would you like double? So he says, I just felt like, I just felt like double for your trouble, right? That's, that's scriptural. He said, I just felt like I should do a survey and analysis and see what this property is worth now. He just got curious. Well, the Lord stirred him up. Appraisers came, listen to me, 10 months after he bought it. He said, now the property is worth to sell today for $7.2 million. His money doubled just like that. Lift your hands. Do you, th and you think, people would think, well, that was going to happen anyway? No, it wasn't. He touched the grace of God upon the life of the prophet. The prophet asked him for nothing. The prophet was not raising an offering. The prophet was not worried if he came to see him or not. The prophet was busy. The prophet was in conferences and schedules and meetings, and it was like a kind of a surprise to hear this man's coming to see us. Though we would be happy to see, but if it happened or not, it's okay. We're moving on with the program. And got blessed like that in the millions of dollars. That's just one testimony. As a pastor I prayed for on the phone, the car of his dreams he got, he, he, somebody rose up to write his land uh, arrears off, and he got a new building and a new house and all of that, just like that, boom, phone call. He tapped the grace in faith. It's amazing. So you're in the right place. Do you think so? At the right time. Do you think so? Yes. Father, thank you for your blessing that makes rich and has no sorrow. And I hear the Lord saying, uh, he's ordaining and commissioning several people to put their hand now to the plow in his work and get busy and make something happen. It's the right time. It's the right time. It wasn't always the right time, but the right time has finally come. And the, and the Lord is giving that opportunity to certain people. He's calling and commissioning and ordaining people. I know I'll be hearing from people, people that will start writing, whether I ask or not, they'll start writing. Prophet, what can I do? Can I do anything? Yes, somehow. I, I just want uh, God to talk to people and visit them. But the work is being expanded throughout the world. And I'm really, really, really seriously amazed that this is happening. What a privilege that the hand of God would be on a man. What a privilege. What a holy privilege that God would place his power and anointing on somebody. What a privilege. What a privilege. To him be all the glory. Let's just lift our hands and worship him for a minute because he gets all the credit. In, in my world, he gets all the credit, all the praise. All of it. 100%. Not any less. Not 99.9. No, no. 100%. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. For it's you that does all these things. It's you that prophesies. It's you that teaches. It's you that blesses your people. It's you that delivers people. It's you that heals people. It's you that expands your kingdom throughout the world so people can have better lives. And, you know, literally countless souls can be saved and won into the kingdom. And I, heard, and I heard the Lord this morning, too, uh, uh, didn't speak very loud about it, but he just gave me an impression of a word of knowledge that the day is coming for great evangelism. I mean, there's evangelists that want to connect, people that are bona fide in the office of the evangelist. I'm really in another office, as you know, but, uh, uh, or a couple of offices. But, but the office of the evangelist, to go out, to have power, to win souls, I mean, that order is coming. It's all going to happen. It's going to, and it's literally going to, tra you know, the only thing we can carry with us when we leave the earth is people. Can't take any of your stuff. Only people. So we're in the people business. <laughs> that is the business of the Father. 
Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. What is it? To win men to the kingdom of heaven. Oh, my, my, my. If you're there and you've not prayed this prayer to receive Jesus as your Savior, please say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you. I want to accept your gift of eternal life. I want, want, want to take you up on your offer that you said you would save me, deliver me, and give me everlasting life and not let me uh, abide in darkness, but to have the light of life and the beautiful realm of your salvation for all of eternity. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. And make sure you also tell people, win people to the Lord, witness to people. Don't assume that everybody's just saved and they're okay. They're not okay. The Lord wants to use all of us to bring people into the kingdom. Well, I don't know how to wrap it, but we're going to just pause and Father, thank you for your grace in Jesus' name. I have a book that I've written called The Benefits of Excellence, and I also have it in an e-edition. When you partner with the ministry by sowing any seed into this work, and those of you that are live here in the meeting, you do that, make sure I have your, your WhatsApp. Even your WhatsApp, I don't even need an email, but your WhatsApp, and I can send you the link so you can read this book in digital format. Anybody that's sowing any gift into the ministry, I will gladly send this to you, even in a digital copy, uh, a digital copy, and you'll be able to partake. I, I've had business people write me back, I'm eating this up, I'm getting so blessed. This is just one of my books. We have several others coming out in e-books, The Laws of Success, Prophetic Keys of Successful Living. Also, the prophecies for Kenya will be also digitized. So many we have uh, that were, were released in books some time back. We sold out of all those printings. Good problem, but it's a problem we need to, <laughs> we, <laughs> we need to print again. But uh, I, I really want it to be online also, and you can partake of those. I love you so much. Father, thank you for your touch. Thank you for your covering. Thank you for the favor. Thank you for the activation, for the new assignment, for the new day. The shift has come. The new thing is happening and people are gonna be blessed in the middle of all of this. In Jesus' name, I'm Thomas Manton IV, more later. Thank you for sewing into the ministry. You can do that on thomasmanton.com. You can also, in Kenya, our friends in Kenya can M Pesa on 0792320780. Those will be on the screen. And make sure you sew something into this anointing that God will begin to answer by fire and bless you back. You want to be a partner with what he's doing in Jesus' name. And I thank God for you and your life. And I'm praying for you and see you on the very next broadcast in Jesus' name. God bless you very much. Amen.